Alright, so in this video we're going to talk about the inverse kinematics solver. And what we're going to talk about specifically is how to find the change in x of the end effector position given a change in a joint rotation angle, theta zero, in this case theta zero is that angle, and how to figure out the change in y given a change in the inner rotation angle. So we want to figure out dx for the end effector, dy for the end effector, given a change in d theta zero. And we'll do the same thing for d theta 1, d theta 2, and d theta 3. So let's suppose that we have a little robot arm. And let's suppose that we have the first angle, which is theta 0, and the second angle, which is theta 1, and the third angle, which is theta 2. What we'd like to figure out is how a change in d theta 1 influences the position of the end effector. And that's the end effector right there. So at this point, we'll assume that we know x1 and y1, which are the x and the y positions at the end of the, f at the beginning end of the first segment right here. And we'll assume that we also know the position of the end effector, which I'll call um, just end for end effector position. What we want to know is that if we rotate this joint theta 1 a little bit in the counterclockwise direction, which way will the end effector go? That is, if I rotate this joint just a little bit, which way will the end effector move? And I'm going to figure that out using a cross product. Uh, think of it this way. So the axis of rotation of this joint is the z-axis. That means that if I were to put my pen straight up coming out of the board, that would give me the axis of rotation of this joint right here. So I have a vector coming straight up out of the board. And then I also know the vector, or at least I can figure out the vector, which connects the beginning end of the first segment with the end of the entire arm. And that gives me another vector in this direction. So what I'm going to do is compute a cross product using the right hand rule, in which I start off on the z-axis, which is the axis of rotation, curl around following the vector that connects the end beginning of the arm with the end of the joint, and then that will give me the vector which tells me which way I'm going to go. So this vector right here is given by taking the end position minus x1 and y1. So this is end minus x1 comma y1. And I'll just call that vector v1 just because it'll be convenient to have a name for it. So this vector right here, which is actually um, dx d theta 1 comma dy d theta 1. So that vector right there is going to be given by, so I have dx d theta 1 is equal to, I'm sorry, comma dy d theta 1 is equal to the cross product of 0, 0, 1 crossed with v1. Now you might be a little concerned here because I'm taking a three-valued vector, 0, 0, 1, which represents the axis of rotation, and crossing it with the two-valued vector, which is the endpoint minus x1 comma y1. Well, it turns out I can just add in a z component here. And so what I'll really have is uh, just add in 0 as the z component. So this cross product right here will give me dx d theta 1, dy d theta 1, comma 0, because it'll also tell me that there's no change in the z direction. And then these are the values that I will put back in the matrix. Notice that when I put these in the Jacobian, it's going to be dx d theta 1, dy d theta 1. So they're actually going to go in this order right here. And that is how we figure out um, which way the end effector is going to go, given a small change in the joint angle.